what I would like to again return to and point out at this stage is this kind of uh, fascinating for me forceful alliance between philosophy and Lacanian psychoanalysis when it comes to the four fundamental concepts of psychoanalysis. Um, this is clearly what attracts me in Lacan and I'm not judging the implications of this for the clinical uh, psychoanalysis. Perhaps they are, I don't know, bad or whatever, but uh, this is not what I'm discussing here. So with the notable exception of the drive, which he develops mostly through reading of Freud, uh, the other three concepts are developed by Lacan with explicit reference to philosophy. And reference is too weak a term here. He develops them by situating them in a clear philosophical, direct philosophical lineage. For transference, you have Plato. For repetition, you have Symposium. For repetition, you have Aristotle, TK, and Automaton, and Kierkegaard. And, and most prominently and most fascinatingly, for the unconscious, you have Descartes and his cogito. And the later is probably <laughs> the most surprising and ingenious connection, but really also, I think, a quite essential one. Uh, after starting with Nietzsche and Heidegger and to some extent already with Kant, contemporary philosophy has largely turned away from the founder of rationalist metaphysics, Descartes, a prominent psychoanalyst, turns to the Cartesian cogito of all concepts in order to validate and demonstrate the Freudian hypothesis of the unconscious. And in, uh, and in clear difference to some other modern approaches which would um, read the unconscious or madness as kind of the other repressed side of the cogito, uh, Lacan takes it to constitute itself the very subject of the unconscious, the Freudian subject, as he calls it. 